Hello, I'm Katie Jarvis. This week, Real Foot Forward is made possible by our friends at CrossFit Auto Body, located in Union City. CrossFit Auto Body is the perfect place to begin your fitness journey. Come in and become part of the CrossFit community. Visit uccrossfitautobody.com for more information. Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast recorded here every single week in beautiful West Tennessee. Our podcast, just like our museum and heritage park, is dedicated to celebrating our unique Southern culture, spirit, and accomplishments. I'm Scott Williams, and I have an incredible guest here with me today. Welcome, Zoe. Hi, Scott. Okay, so tell, so let's back up. Okay, to, let's back up let's to um, where you were born. Who's your family? I think you're born in this area. Tell us a little bit about Little Zoe. Little Zoe. Um, little Zoe was born in Union City, Tennessee. Um, grew up in Troy. Both of my parents are teachers. Well, oh. were they Where'd both they retired? Teach? My father taught at Abbey County Central, and my mother taught in Carothersville, Missouri. So she drove like an hour there, hour back every single day. What What made her do that? What What was there? that she liked so much? Was it a school that she really liked or a discipline that she was? I don't think it was either. I think they just offered her a job and she was like, okay. I mean, she's a, she loves to drive. Oh, She maybe should not drive, but she loves to drive. Okay. And so um, she would just go back and forth every day and she retired from there. Before that, she drove the school bus. So, Well, that's it. What subjects did they teach? What subjects did they teach? My mom was math and she was also music. And my father has been Spanish, French, and English. Huh. So that's probably where you got your communication skills and yes. your ability to perform in theater. Yes. But let me tell you, I failed his class. So oh, that was complicated. <laughs> he was my Spanish teacher. And, you know, I'm daddy's little girl. So I was like, I don't have to do anything. I was wrong. And this was in high school? High school. Mm-hmm. So you took your dad for Spanish in high school. I did. And you failed. And I failed. <laughs> That's, that seems like that would have been hard to do. It, it, it was. Now, well, now not really. I just didn't do anything. <laughs> I failed Spanish a lot in college, mm-hmm. but my dad wasn't a Spanish professor. Was he able to help you any at home? On, on If uh, I would have asked for it, he would have helped me, but I never really asked for it. I was you, just trying to fly by. That's awful to say, did, isn't No, it's it? okay. Did you have to take it again? I did not. Oh. Um, So in high school, what we did was you had two years of foreign language. So the first year I passed, second year I failed. So there was not really a purpose in taking it again. I just failed it and it knocked me out of challenge. So, Okay. But so do you speak Spanish today? I can say one line. (laughs) One line. But he'll he'll talk to me in Spanish all the time. Um, I say, me amo Zoe, me encanta a football americano con queso. Oh, muy bien. Do you know what that means? No. No. I just said, my name is Zoe. I like American football with cheese. That's all I know how to say. That's awful. Muy bien. Gracias. That means very good. Thank you. Yeah. I, please. I know some of the yeah. language, but not a lot of it. So so you brothers and sisters? I have one brother, okay. Patrick. He's like a genius. He can take a pile of anything and probably build you a computer out of it. And were you guys city dwellers or did you live out in the country? Country. Farm girl. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. On the acreage, on acreage. land. Mm-hmm. Did they farm as well? Uh-huh. We have a family farm. Um, a couple of years before my grandmother passed away, somebody else took over farming it for us, so we didn't have to do it. Um, but they still all live out there. And so you uh, were born, raised. Did you ever want to leave? Did you think, I got to get out of this town? Or were you comfortable? I thought that for a split second, but then, you know, I love hometown, like small town life. So lots of my friends moved to Nashville and all these other places and they were loving their life, but now they've come back here. So it's kind of like, you missed it. You love this place. Um, <laughs> right. What What about it do you love? Just the people. Everybody knows you. You can walk into any grocery store, any, um, just anywhere really. You can walk into DPA and you know people. Mm-hmm. And um, so if you're ever like in a bind or anything, you know there's always somebody around that can help you out. Yeah, it's a real sense of community. Mm-hmm. Um, so at some point you decided, uh, well, at some point you must have graduated. They must have let you out of high school. They did. You, you graduated. Did. I eventually. graduated on time. Okay. I just graduated Good. in blue instead of red. Okay. So. What, what does that mean? Um, red means that you were a challenge graduate, so you took all the harder classes, uh-huh. and blue meant that you made it through. Oh, I, I didn't know about that. <laughs> so know I was a blue girl. That. <laughs> huh. That, 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 I don't think they, do they still do that? I'm not sure. I haven't been to a graduation in a minute. 
Well, so I, I probably would have been blue as well. So. You, you, no, you wouldn't have. Oh, no, I would have You been would have, blue. like, excelled to the highest no, no, point, No, 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 no. I would have been blue. So you went to college. I went to college. And where did you go and what did you major in? Um, I went for communications. And I went to UT Martin and to Dyersburg State. So I kind of, like, swapped it up between the two of them. I did not graduate. <laughs> it's okay. Did not graduate. You, you, but you, I tried it. College yeah. isn't for everyone. Absolutely. So that is absolutely true. What what uh, I didn't like it. Kind of classes were you taking? Um, just I took a radio class. Okay. Where we did this right here. There you and go. And I just took all the PR classes that I could take. Math was my worst subject. Still is. I'm awful at math. You know, I took like the pre. Are they called prerequisites or yeah, something like yeah. that? Took all those. But you're. But obviously, communication. I mean, you're a great communicator. I love um, talking. Um, to anybody people. who knows Zoe knows that you're a great communicator S on social media. Um, oh yeah, I love your series of photos that you posted. Well, thank um, you. Those were uh, hilarious. <laughs> um, where you were recreating popular model poses. Mm -hmm. I think it is. Mm -hmm. Do you still those, do that? Um, I don't. Maybe I should try that again. I think you should. I yeah. Think it, I think that was fun. Find some different ones. Yeah, no, it was very fun. Have you not seen those? Oh, they're hilarious. I was trying to do yoga poses. <laughs> That's what it was. And it yoga was poses. Awful. <laughs> they were amazing. You should do a calendar. I should. I think I think we could make Would you into Would you purchase one if I did? We'd make you into a superstar. Okay. I think so absolutely. <laughs> so so you're very much you're a social media, you know, you're a communicator, you're you know, what what you've worked, you've had several different jobs here in Union City. A lot of people may not a lot of people listening may not know, you know, what kind of jobs do people do when they live in a rural community? Right. So right. What, what jobs have you worked since you've been here? Well, let's or, see. Or um, here? I've opened a couple businesses. So I opened up Curves of Union City. And at that same time, I worked for Harris Chiropractic when mm -hmm. it was here. Um, I opened up Applebee's. Oh. Yeah. I was one go. of the first servers at Applebee's. Now, I've had all these jobs, but I've stuck with them for a while. So don't think that I've. Oh, no. Done that's okay. Like that. um, let's see. Gotten fired from a few places. That's okay. Well, I, like my know. first job at Subway. Oh, that what was happened? rough. Well, I was in college and they made me come in real early on Saturday mornings. Okay. You don't do that to a college student. Right. That's rough. That's rough. Yeah. And so I was late a couple of times and so I got fired. I'm sorry. When you <laughs> it go broke in, my heart. When you go in subways now, do you ever do you ever go now into a subway? Um Do you I, smell the bread and the memories all come running they back? They really do. They really <laughs> do. Do you know actually after I got fired, I didn't even go to Subway for two years. <laughs> I was so mad. Right. No, I, I was understand like, you fired that. me. Right. There um, are there are companies that I have bad mojo when I mm -hmm. think about them and I don't go. Go, I don't go in them. What other, what other, I know of a few of your jobs that you've had. Oh, yes. Okay. So um, I worked at Kaiser Pharmacy for the past 11 years. And in March, I came over to Hoosier Creek Crossing right mm -hmm. across the way from y'all. So you're right next door. You're our next door neighbor. Next now. door neighbor. You're our sister in tourism. Yes. And if you ever need sugar, I'll have you some. So. Or eggs, or, or eggs, butter, or butter, yeah, or a croissant. Yeah, well, you have breakfast. We do. At the we hotels have, we do. The so people aren't going to know what Hoosier Creek is. Um, why don't you elaborate? Okay, um, Hoosier Creek Crossing is a development. It's really Hoosier Creek Hospitality, but it's a development where we have built two hotels. One of them that is still under construction, which is the Holiday Inn Express, and then the other one that is up and running is Sleep Inn Mainstay. And, um, you know, being in a rural community mm -hmm. with a hundred million dollar museum sitting here with people coming and visiting from all over the world, literally, we have an airport here in Union City. So yes. people come in from everywhere. Um, there really was a shortage of hotel rooms. Of hotel rooms, there was. And so um, the hotel, um, both are, are all of your rooms open? All of our rooms are open. So as far as I know right now. So it's really meeting a need um, that el that everyone in the in the community felt. I know University of Tennessee at Martin didn't yes. have enough rooms for people coming there. We've been you having know. people come visit from there, which is very nice. So I know that people are super gr um, grateful. Yes. that y it's brand new, it's clean, it's crisp, um, it's got an indoor pool. Smells That's my favorite new. Part. Yeah, it mm -hmm. smells new. Um, it's amazing place. So well, thank you. so and and. When the uh, Holiday Inn Select opens, mm -hmm. there's going to be Discovery Park themed suites, I understand. Yes, there are. There will be four kids suites themed after something that's in Discovery Park. So I think we're going to have a dinosaur suite. I think we might have an airplane suite. I'm not for sure on the other two, but yeah. it's all themed after y'all. Yeah, that's Because y'all are awesome. amazing. That's Discovery awesome. Park is amazing. 
Well, thank you. You're on, welcome. Be- on behalf of Discovery Park, thank you. <laughs> so I know that you work for Kaiser Pharmaceutical, and what's funny about that, not funny, but what, what is surprising about that is Jason, mm-hmm. Dr. Jason, what do we call a pharmacist? Pharmacist, pharmacist Jason. Jason is also an entertainer. In, oh, yeah. In his, in his own right. And he can I kn- strum a guitar like nobody's business. He's I know. Working. I went to a, uh, an, a performance at that hotel in um, Fulton. The Meadows. The Meadows, mm-hmm. which is an incredible place. It is a and Jason place. was the main act that night. Mm-hmm. And the place was packed. Were you there when I was there? Probably. We had like the whole room that he was sitting in. Yep. Full up. I was there. Okay, um, I didn't know. I would have come and hugged yeah, you. Yeah, I was there. I mean, it's an am- he he is really mm-hmm. he really tears up that piano. I know. So, yeah, he's a talented guy. So that's another. It's fa- it's always fascinating to me how much the arts kind of permeate everything everybody does. Fun fact about here. Jason Kaiser: when he was younger, he actually did some songwriting. Oh, in Nashville. So like he he's he's been in the music industry for a long time. Nobody's really known that. Oh, that, oh wow. So yeah. you're uncovering him today. Don't as tell a, him. Nobody tell him if you hear this. <laughs> yeah, no one tell Jason that Zoe talked about talked about his songwriting career. Yeah. Okay, so the arts are obviously important to you. Yes, um, very much. You t- tell tell me what outlets you found here in Union City to express um, yourself, the your biggest, creative side. The biggest outlet is, well, I also like to do art, so woodwork, you know, stuff like that. So there's tons of things that you can do with that. People are always wanting a wood sign with the sign on it and stuff like that. But my the most major outlet that I found is Masquerade Theater, which is a great little hometown theater um, that puts on some wonderful performances. If you've never been, you need to go. I know you've been, though. I have, yeah. Um, I love it. But... That's been the biggest outlet. And just seeing all the talent that's actually around here that comes in every single day in that place is amazing. You never know how much talent you have until you see something like that. So yeah, what what got you there in the to begin with? Like what what was your how did you end up there? Um one of my friends asked me to be in they did a masquerade theater goes Broadway. So what it was was they picked all these different songs from Broadway musicals and we would come out each person would perform a different one. So I think the one that I started out with was My Fair Lady. I can't remember the name of the song, but one of the songs off of My Fair Lady. And I started with that. And ever since, I've just done more and more and more. So, like, I've done Grease and I did Annie. Being the drunk Mrs. Hannigan was the best thing in the world. <laughs> I loved it. I did 9 to 5. Oh, that was I was, was the fun. secretary in that one. Which, which who was your, uh, were you Dolly? I was Dolly. You, you were yes. Dolly? I was secretary. I was, like, the... I can't say the word I want to say, but I was the secretary that loved her boss very much. So, right. and that was hilarious. Like I was crawling around on the floor in that one. I mean, it was fun. Yeah. And Annie also did hairspray. Hairspray was real fun. Who were you in that? Tracy Turnblatt. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. You were like a superstar. Oh, we, we had, had so much here. fun with that one. And so what, what does that add to your life? Like being Joy. able to. I know like putting on a play is very hard and very time consuming. But like the first time that you walk out on stage and you say that first line that you're supposed to say and all those butterflies are in your stomach and then it just all goes away because people are laughing or, you know, making some sort of gesture in the audience. You're like, that's the perfect moment right there. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, um, you mentioned um, you mentioned the culture. We talk about the culture of small towns. Mm -hmm. Um, So um, is there a dating scene here in Union City? Um, well, if there is, I need somebody to show me where it's at. <laughs> where is that guy? So where's the um, hangout? Where's the hangout joint where people go? Um, there's a lots of places. Since I've gotten older, we hang out more at people's houses. Okay. But we also love hops and barley. I was going to ask about hops yeah, and barley. Love hops and barley. Last weekend, I went to Sassafras and had dinner. That was a good time. Just sitting at the bar, hanging out, talking to people. And then... Um, <laughs> Uh, do folks from Union City go to Martin and vice versa? Do the, I do. Do the yes. communities bleed together? Or I think they do. Okay. Like I'll go to the Meadows in Fulton. Yeah. Or my group of people will go to Paducah. We love Paducah. Or we'll go to Martin. There's that. What's the new oyster bar? Oh, Blue, Blue Oak, Oak Oyster Oak. Bar. And then there's also um, Opera House. That yeah. place is fun at happy hour. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. So there is there is a there's a scene. Yes. There's a scene. There's here. a scene. I just. Don't know where anybody's at in that scene. I just go to have fun for myself. Yeah, there you go. That's good. That's good. Well, what's next for Zoe? Like, what are you looking forward to? Maybe there's a play coming up that I might want to do. 
So how does that work? You, um, they post the play. This is the play, and these are the parts. And you go. Do you do you actually stand on the stage and try out in front of the you have producers? To, normally during tryouts, what they do is they, if it's a musical, they get you up there. You have to sing a song in front of everybody that's in there. It's kind of nerve wracking, even though you sing on their stage all the time. Um, you have to sing a song, and then they'll make you read through the script. So that's like a blind reading. You've never seen the script before. You have to be like, oh, what's that long word? I mean, you just have to make it up as you go. Now, are there people that I mean? I at, at the play that I saw. Mm-hmm. What was it, what was it, we said? What it was? Well, I got thank Shrek. you at Shrek. Uh-huh. See, my memory's very short. You're fine. Um, at Shrek, I saw people in the play that I think maybe aren't used to being in plays, or this was you True. know new for them. True. So you guys are also people out in the community who just want to give want to try it give out, give it a shot, yeah. do something different. Um, Most of the time, every single person that tries out gets a part in the play. Yeah, we're not, we don't turn people away. Yeah, oh, well, that's that's good. Especially it's volunteers. So if you're going to volunteer your time, come on in, honey. Right. You know. Right. I don't. I don't know what I could have been in Trek. Maybe Pinocchio. Stop that it. That was kind of. That, I need you to yeah. be in a play. <laughs> yeah. That's what I need. I do. I need to. You know what? I, I might would be in. Have I you ever done a play? Um, I never have. Oh, no, Scott. now I've been the set. Neither has Katie, I don't think, and she needs have to be in done, one as well. You've never done a play? Well, in high school, I did. Okay. In high school. <laughs> in high school. I did the sets for some plays, like at church oh, kind yeah. of things. Um, um, and so that was fun. That's a whole other job, too. I yeah. mean, oh, yeah. That takes a lot of your time up. No, doing the sets, I mean, that's hard. Mm-hmm. Who, do, who does the sets here? We have um, a guy that we contract out Bob Elderkin I'm pretty sure I, I don't know how to say Bobby Bob. we call him Theater Bob Theater Bob okay uh, Theater Bob and Theater Bob he builds all of our sets and sometimes like the props and stuff we help out with but mm-hmm. lots of the times he takes care of all that too now Theater Bob did he have a background in that or because I'm not sure he's been doing it as long as I've Shrek been was in incredible there. Mm-hmm. I mean it, it I'm telling people think I'm and exaggerating that set for Adam's family was amazing oh, I hate that I missed so that good. I hate that. Maybe they'll bring it back so you can see it. Uh, They do bring things back every once in Mm -hmm. a while. I think they're wanting to bring back Shrek at some point. I'd like to see Annie. I'd like to see. I'd like to see nine to five. You know, nine this, to five was hilarious. This would be good timing to bring back nine to five Mm -hmm. because of all the hashtag Me Too stuff going on. It's relevant. Um, Yeah. So it'd be fun to see. Um, see you roping up somebody and oh, pulling them. I'll up do it. This, you know. That was that was one of the funnest plays. Yeah, no, that would be good. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. See, this was painless, wasn't it? It was. It was very painless. I was so, real nervous when I was coming in here, but I was like, okay. Now you feel relaxed. We did good. Yeah. You feel good. You can have coffee. We have free coffee here. Yeah. Fr- oh, I love in free coffee. In case you'd like some. <laughs> um, and if people happen to be over at the hotel, they could shake your hand and say hello to you in person. Yes. Um, yes. Because the hotels will be open and ready to. Hey, and we're working on packages for. With y'all, uh, I put them in yesterday or Monday. So that's incredible. So we'll have he, a Polar Express package where awesome. you can come and stay a night and come to the Polar Express. And then we're just going to have a regular DPA package so that you can come get tickets. Who wouldn't want to come spend the night? Exactly. See Discovery Park. Go see Real Foot Lake. Exactly. I mean, you guys have really um, opened up the tour and travel business for this region in a big way. And for that, we're all grateful. Well, we're all very proud of it. So... We just hope it goes good, and if you ever want to stop by the hotel, just come on in, and I'll get you some breakfast. Sounds fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. And now, let's go find out a little bit more behind the scenes at Discovery Park of America. Thank you, Scott. I am Andrew Gibson with the Education Department here at Discovery Park of America. Today, I'm with Nathaniel Newland, a docent here, who will be sharing a story that I'm sure you're all going to find fascinating. Uh, I know I certainly did when I first heard about it. Uh, So, Nathaniel, what are you going to be telling us about today? We're going to be talking about the Nantan meteorite that can be found on the upper level here at Discovery Park. Okay, so uh, I guess my first question... What's that thing made of? It's about 91% iron, like most meteorites. Meteorites come in three different categories. There are iron meteorites, stony meteorites, and then stony iron meteorite. The iron ones are a lot more common, and that's what ours is. It's, as you can imagine, it's pretty heavy. That one little rock is about 640 pounds. The full meteorite before it disintegrated, as we'll talk about earlier, was 21,000 pounds. And was probably only about the size of this room. Now, um, you're talking about the Nantan meteorite. Every is every single piece of that big meteorite, um, you know, the, the different you know fragments of it. Are they all called separate things, or do we classify all of that a piece of the Nantan meteorite? So when we're talking about naming it, is that we would call all of them fragments of the Nantan meteorite. So what we have is about three percent of 
the whole deal. The biggest piece was about 4,400 pounds. And it's at the National Museum of Science and Space in uh, Tokyo. We have a pretty considerable chunk of it. Gotcha. Uh, so what's, give me some more of the history behind this thing. So it fell in 1516. It's really one of the first documented uh, meteorite falls in human history. And it's probably the biggest that we know of. The local government, Nantan County, their government records say during the summertime in May of the 11th year of the Emperor Zengdi, stars fell from the northwest direction five to six fold long, waving like snakes and dragons. They were as bright as lightning and disappeared in seconds. So it was a pretty significant event. Woke a lot of people up. Obviously, we don't know if anyone was injured. Afterwards, the locals didn't really know to search for fragments of it because they didn't really know what it was, to be honest. Uh, so it went uninvestigated for over 400 years until 1958, when Emperor Mao instigated the Great Leap Forward, you know, China's big uh, economic development plan. These metals came into such high demand that uh, the government even started to confiscate family cookware, melting down their pots and pans and spoons. So these farmers remember that they had seen these big chunks of iron laying out in their fields. So they went out and they picked them up and they tried to smelt them down and they wouldn't melt. Uh, and that's due to the fact that there's a little bit of nickel in the meteorites. And nickel has a higher melting point than iron. So the same fires that would melt iron would not melt the nickel iron meteorites. And thankfully they didn't because they later found out that they were fra uh, fragments of that meteorite from 500 years prior. So once they found that out, they started collecting them for a different reasons. And we have a chunk on display here that was probably collected by a farmer or some villager uh, in 1958 as part of the Great Leap Forward. All right. Well, thank you, Nathaniel, for sharing that story with us. I know uh, I found it fascinating. I hope all of our listeners did too. Something else, when you come to the museum, be sure to go upstairs and, and uh, we, we encourage you to stick your hands on, on the meteorite and touch it. The meteorite itself is actually four and a half billion years old. It's just a little bit older than the Earth itself. So when you put your hand on it, it's probably the oldest thing you'll ever touch. So keep that in mind when you visit. All right, so like Nathaniel said, uh, the oldest thing you can ever touch can be found right here at beautiful Discovery Park of America. Thank you all for listening once again, and we hope to see you here real soon. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes or wherever you may be listening. Plan your own adventure to see beyond at Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. Be sure to also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.